In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 fakest life hacks that we have debunked or myth busted on this channel, including how to fix a cracked screen on your phone, the easiest way to make orange juice, making a movie projector out of a cell phone, how to get a whole watermelon ball, and how to stop a car thief. Plus more things you guys dare me to do in the comment section. In the last video, I asked you guys, what's your New Year's resolution? And your comments made me feel excited for the new year, but also a little bit worried about your priorities. But since you guys came up with so many comments, I thought I'd ask another question. What is one thing that you hope happens in 2019? It could be anything from getting a big raise at your job to fidget spinners finally becoming illegal. Be creative with your answers and put whatever you can come up with in the comment section. I'll be picking 10 of my favorite to be featured in the next video. Now, let's get this thing going. But now I wanna try out a life hack that I know to an absolute certainty will not work. Recently, I saw a life hack video where somebody just rolled an orange in their hand, cut the top off, and placed the top of a 20 ounce bottle on it, and then hot glued it, which is all very possible and realistic until they turned it over and almost an entire glass of orange juice fell out, and that's just not the way that these things work. As some of you may know, I live in Florida where we eat only oranges. Well, not quite, but almost. And anyone from here is gonna tell you that that is just not how you make orange juice. I don't know who that life hack was for, but we're gonna try to debunk it now by simply going through the steps shown in the life hack and we'll get to see exactly how much juice comes out. Okay, so the first step is to just simply remove the top of this 20 ounce bottle. Okay, easy enough. Actually, rather than violently stabbing it, I should probably just cut it with scissors. Okay, the next thing they did in their life hack video is just simply roll the orange a few times like that. Now, while that probably does make it a little bit more juicy in the middle, you know, because you're breaking apart the orange, which is part of the process in actually making orange juice. So, might get a little bit of orange juice out of it. Okay, it's very rolled and soft now. They only rolled it back like twice, but I wanted to give this thing a fair shot at working. So now I'm just going to remove part of the orange. Now I'm gonna take the top of the 20 ounce bottle and just hot glue it to it. Whatever, like that matters. Okay, so you remember how much orange juice fell out of this in the other video, right? Okay, let's give it a shot. We got three or four, got four drops. All right, there you go. Who wants a glass of orange juice? That's how much orange juice you can get by doing this method. If you want orange juice, Make orange juice the normal way, or go buy some. That being said, we'll be on to the next life hack. So for this life hack, I gotta admit, it's not one of the ones I have much hope for. You just simply blow up a balloon and press it down onto your phone and it makes a little phone case. I think that it will technically work, but I just think it's probably gonna be the absolute worst phone case you ever have in your life. But I'll still test it to find out. All right, well, it made a phone case kind of has no support, some of the screen is covered, but it does have a little grippy handle thing. And if that's the only reason for doing this, then I say it's not bad, because it actually does have a pretty cool little handle and you can sling your phone around until it falls out and breaks. Okay, now it's cool. I just dropped my phone with no case on it. I think I might be as dumb as this life hack. It still works. But I do think it's cool how you can make a balloon cover something like that. I just think maybe we can do better than a phone case. Maybe like a swimming cap or something. Of course, you'll need a slightly bigger balloon for that. This balloon might be too big. Well, I wanted to use the beanie because I feel like this is gonna rip my hair out when I pull it off, but I guess that's the price you pay for a good life hack these days. Or maybe it's not a swimming cap at all. Maybe it's just some sort of closed fist glove. Oh, getting lightheaded. But yeah, you know, like a boxing glove. I don't even know where that balloon went. Yes, I did it! Yeah, it's like a, it's like a boxing glove. Or more like an MMA glove. Sure, that's my MMA glove. This is as good of an MMA glove as it is an iPhone case. 
Well, I guess you can't use balloons for everything, and that being said, we'll be on to the next light pack. For this next light pack, what we're gonna be trying to do is make a projector out of a shoebox, a cell phone, and a magnifying glass. I just bought this magnifying glass today, or whatever, let's just get started. This is the shoebox I'll be using. Now what I'm gonna wanna do is trace out exactly where I'm gonna put this onto the shoebox and then cut it out. And because this box and this magnifying glass are definitely both not perfect for this job, I'm gonna be covering up any unwanted holes with masking tape. And this will serve as the brace for my phone. So I have everything set up here almost, and I'm pretty sure this isn't gonna work. Life hacks are lies, for the most part. I try to point out the ones that do work, but we'll take a look at some of the ones that don't especially seeing as how this one's probably going to be entering that category soon. This might take some adjusting, but if it works, it's worth it. Turned up brightness to max. I then bumbled around in the dark until I had a sudden realization, and that is that this isn't going to work. Now, I don't know if it would never work, but under these real world circumstances, it wasn't gonna happen. But if you know why this didn't work, leave it in the comment section. I mean, is this a bunk life hack or am I doing something wrong? Just let me know. Okay, I tried and I tried and I tried a lot more than I do with most of these life hacks, but I could not get this to work. I thought there might be some truth to this and maybe other people have gotten it to work before. Possibly I didn't build the box correctly, <laughs> but there are some life hacks that I don't think make any sense. And we'll get into those now. Now I wanted to address another phenomenon that's going on in the life hack genre on YouTube, and that is putting paper clips in the charging port in the thumbnail. Or maybe they'll just put a screw in the charging port like that. Now several life hack channels have put this in the thumbnail for their video, but they never do that in the video. In fact, the only time I've ever seen anybody put a paper clip into a cell phone is to take out the SIM card, which actually is a useful hack. And in case you were wanting to know how to do that, it's actually really simple, and it doesn't even require a paper clip. I'm gonna be using a toothpick. If you have an iPhone, there's a small hole on the side of it, and if you take a paper clip or a toothpick and press it into the hole, it pops out. Then once you have an open SIM card port, you can swap it out for another SIM card if you wanna change your phone's phone number. Or like, say if you have a work phone and the phone breaks, but you need to be able to answer your boss's call, just pop the SIM card out and put it into another phone. It does need to be the same service provider, otherwise you're gonna to need to make some alterations to your SIM card. But either way, knowing how to do that can definitely save the day if you're having some sort of a cell phone emergency. And when you're done having an emergency, just pop it back into the phone like that and you're ready to go. But it's not putting it in the charging port, which obviously does nothing. Next up, I wanted to talk about something that I've seen time and time again in countless life hack videos, and that's a balloon on the end of a hot glue gun. Now, most of the time, they'll show you an image with the hot glue gun and the balloon like that, and this is the image that goes viral. But that never happens in the life hack video. Instead, what they show you is that if you dump hot glue into a balloon, it makes a pretty good sink stopper. Although to be honest, that doesn't seem to be very easy either. It's definitely melting the balloon to the hot glue gun. Let's see how long it actually takes to fill up this balloon with hot glue. Ah, this is stupid. This makes absolutely no sense. If all you wanted was a drain stopper, there's probably a million things you could use before you tried to fill a balloon full of hot glue. This is a ridiculous way of doing that, but I gotta admit, there is something about that image that just makes you want to click on it, and I think that's what they're kind of counting on. Also, for some reason that I do not understand, people are always putting hot glue on makeup brushes as well. This is also something that they're always putting in the thumbnails of life hack videos, but just never actually doing. Usually they put hot glue across the board and use that to clean off the makeup brush, but you'll never see them doing this to their makeup brushes, and for good reason, because it does absolutely nothing. And while I like life hacks that work, sometimes it's more interesting when you look at the ones that do nothing. And that being said, we'll be on to the next one. And then there's two other popular thumbnails I see for cell phone life hacks, and that is putting toothpaste on your phone or rubbing it with an eraser. And they say either of those will fix a cracked screen. And just for fun, let's give those a try. I mean, I have been surprised before. So as you can see, I have a crack in my screen protector. It was very difficult to get this shot, so I hope you can see that. There's actually another crack similar just below it, which is also very difficult to see. Now the internet wants you to believe that you can just erase this right off. 
They even go as far as to say it would work on the screen itself, which is a much more complicated piece of glass than the screen protector. I've seen some life hack videos recommend using a normal pink eraser, while others recommend a different kind of eraser that you'll never be able to find anyways. I should point out that not every video directly says that you can erase a crack off of your phone screen, but it's just heavily implied by the thumbnail. If you watch the video, it actually has nothing to do with that most of the time. Not like there's a difference or anything, but I figure since I do have a crack in my screen protector, we'll give this a shot anyways. This is about as fine of a crack as you could possibly imagine. I'm sure you can't even see it right now, but after I'm done, we'll check it out and see if it worked. Now, of course, doing that leaves a lot of smears on the phone, so I'm just gonna wipe it off with my shirt, so that way if the crack is still there, we can see it. And as you can see, the crack is still there. But that's not the only stupid thing that the internet says you can do to get a crack off of your phone screen. They also recommend using toothpaste. And as much as I don't wanna glob toothpaste all over my phone right now, I guess we'll give it a shot. Now I'm gonna take my time and rub it in nice and evenly as if that actually matters or something. Is it weird that I'm praying for this to actually work? Does that make me a fool? And there is the crack, which is a phrase you almost never want to hear. But I'd rather bring you guys the truth. And the truth is, I just need to put another screen protector on my phone, and it'll be just fine. And that being said, we'll be on to the next life hack. And we'll get this thing started with the first life hack, of which I've seen a lot of images floating around the internet. They look like this, and I knew I had to get to the bottom of it. Or, really, more like the center. So this next life hack, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to open up a watermelon and take out the middle, so that way you can present it at a party as a cool life hack slash party favor. I'm gonna give you a hint though, these are two different watermelons, but it's pretty easy to do, and I'm gonna show you how now. So the first thing that you need to do when you're completing this little party trick is split a watermelon in half. This watermelon actually looks a little bit past its expiration date, which is okay, because we're not gonna be eating this one anyways. Yeah, that watermelon is definitely expired and pretty gross. So if you are planning on doing this at home, better use fresh ingredients. But like I said, this isn't gonna be the watermelon that we're actually eating, and this isn't gonna be part of the finished product at all. So after you've got the first watermelon halved and emptied, you take your second watermelon and you skin it. Ugh. And once that's done, you should be left with uh, something that looks like this. But nobody has to see how you did any of that. When your friends come over, you just present this and they're gonna all think that you somehow managed to get the center of the watermelon out without breaking the entire outside, which is obviously impossible unless you're using two watermelons. And that being said, I think this is a pretty cool party trick. I guess if you thought about it, it'd be pretty easy to figure out how this was done, but nobody's gonna come to that conclusion right off the bat. Most people are just gonna at first wonder how you got the middle of the watermelon out like that. So I think that's pretty cool. And that being said, we'll be on to the next life hack. Do you want some watermelon? Yummy. <laughs> For this next air, I'll be shoving a kiwi into my banana. So I've noticed a recent trend in life hack videos, and that's showing you fruit that has another fruit inside of it, like a banana with a kiwi inside of it, or an orange with a kiwi inside of it. Lots of kiwis inside of other things, which obviously is impossible, and it's just something to grab your attention. But the disappointing thing about these life hack videos doing that is that they don't really even ever show you how or why the kiwi is inside the banana. I think it would be just a cool, unique thing to just show somebody, maybe, or to use as a party favor, but it kind of reminds me of the long egg that we made. You guys remember that? But because there are so many images of bananas with kiwis in them, and yet we know so little about this, I thought I would actually try to make one. So what I'm gonna be doing is taking this banana, opening it up with a razor blade, then drilling out the core, then hopefully putting kiwis into it without destroying the peel, and having something that you could then just kind of eat like a kiwi banana. This might just be a big mess, but let's let's get to it and see what happens. I'm gonna start by cutting the bottom very precisely. Now I'm gonna get to drilling. God, we are all the way in there. Basically just made banana pudding. Now I have to just try to get as much of the banana out as I possibly can. And we did it. And now we've got an empty banana peel that is still pretty much intact. So now we're gonna get to the difficult part, which is taking these kiwis, peeling them, and then putting them into a shape that they will fit then inside of this banana peel. Inserting the first kiwi. Now I'll just repeat that process several more times. Okay, this banana is now almost about to burst at the seams. I really need some way to just close it up now. 
Okay, so here's what I came up with. It's a banana and it's filled with kiwi. But to open it so I don't put too much stress on it, I am gonna start it off with the X-Acto knife. And then you just peel it back and boom, kiwi. It's a little bit disgusting because there is some banana residue in there, but it's to be expected. And either way, it's enough to convince one of your friends, right? We all have that idiot friend in the group. Yeah, that's who this is for. And I think you might be surprised with who all falls for this. When they see you just open it up and start eating it, there's just something that adds a level of credibility when you start eating the example. It just lets them know that you're not kidding around. This is serious. I take my food pretty seriously. I'm one of those people that does not like to share anything on their plate. I mean, I will, but only because that's the norm. I don't want to. But look at how amazing that looks, though. That looks just like a banana. Pranks and life hacks are not always so healthy. I just cannot get over how perfect that looks. I mean, it's an absolute fraud, but it's not as much of a fraud as those other life hack channels. <laughs> and that being said, we'll be on to the next life hack. Now, I wanted to talk about another phenomenon that I've noticed in the life hack community, and that is putting hot glue on a toothbrush in the thumbnail and then not actually doing it in the video. The closest they usually ever get is wrapping the toothbrush in parchment paper and then applying hot glue, but nobody ever actually puts it directly on the bristles like in the thumbnail. Now, as far as using hot glue to make a toothbrush holder, I think that's, well, cool. But I still wanna know why the internet is suggesting that I put hot glue directly onto the bristles of the toothbrush. And so let's just do both of those things and see what happens. Just my guesstimate of how much I'll need. All right, I'm gonna just try to hold down the parts that won't stay down and then hot glue it all together. Let's see how this turns out. Okay, it works. No one cares. Now let's apply hot glue to the toothbrush and try to figure out how to use it to hack our lives. Let's just see what happens. Well, there's definitely a lot of hot glue on it now. Uh, okay. Since I don't know what we're making, um, I guess that's enough. Now you would think that maybe it's like a cool way to clean your toothbrush, like maybe it just peels right off, but I don't think that's the case. I don't think it's gonna do anything other than get all over your toothbrush and you're not gonna be able to get it off easily. That's what she said. I just got big globs of hot glue running down my toothbrush. I don't know why, but I do. <laughs> See if it's still melting. Yep, sure is. Okay, I'd say it's just about dry. That took a little bit longer than I was expecting. That's what she said. All right, now let's try to use it as a stylus. I think this might actually work. No? No. Just getting marks all over my new screen protector. Um, I wonder if maybe you could use it to like brush your gums. Yeah, that's doing something, sure. Or maybe it's a way to clean or straighten the bristles on your toothbrush. So let's try to rip it off real quick and see if it all comes off in one piece. No, no, it's still all over it. It's dug into the bristles now, so pretty much ruined my toothbrush. All right, well, that's as clean as I'm probably gonna get it, and it's still got uh, hot glue smeared into the bristles, so. So in conclusion, I'm not sure why the internet keeps telling me that this is a life hack, but something that we may never know. But it doesn't just end with toothbrushes. Now they're getting into your makeup brushes too. And it's the same thing. It's just not in the video. And my girlfriend won't let me ruin any of her makeup brushes to prove it to you. Now let's get things started with this first life hack about how not to get your car stolen. I've seen a lot of viral videos about how if you see a penny under your passenger door handle, that means someone might be about to steal your car. And they explain this by saying that the penny will prevent the door from locking. So basically what they're saying could happen is that somebody could find your car while it's locked, put a penny underneath the door handle, then you come up to your car later, unlock it to get in, and then when you get wherever you're going, you lock the car, but the passenger door won't lock because the penny's on the door handle. And you never knew the entire time. But if that's what someone is trying, then they've got a very, very flawed plan. I mean, if you have automatic locks on your car, everybody knows that it's one click for the driver door and two clicks for the passenger door. So you're not even gonna unlock your passenger door unless there's somebody getting in on that side, in which case the penny would fall out. But let's say it does play out exactly how they say. Would it work then? I went out to my car to find out. Okay, let's see if this works. So right now my car is unlocked and I'm going to just put a penny underneath the door. Actually, it's a quarter. I've got a quarter underneath the door, but whatever. Make sure it's unlocked. Then I'm gonna hit the lock button again. So now it should be locked. And it is. And there's the quarter on the ground. 
this did not work. Maybe it would work on somebody's door, but definitely not mine. And to be fair, this might work on some vehicles, but I wouldn't be too worried about it. So if this video was helpful or if you just enjoyed it, make sure to leave it a like. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and bell me for notifications if you'd actually like to see the videos. And as always, I'll be seeing you guys in just a few days with a new video. All right, thanks guys, bye.